Hey, hey, it's your boy Sanford, author of Do You Live On Purpose and Inside the Heart of Cheer. Now, I said in my post yesterday I had four things that I wanted to say, and I'm going to say them today before 2016. The first thing I wanted to say is thank you for letting me go. Now, it may sound a bit cold or a bit harsh. It may even sound a little bit manipulative or wishy-washy. But I don't care what you think it sounds like. This is really what it means. Now, I've had relationships end. I've had business end. I've had family matters end. I've had um, people pass away. People die. And what that means is, in all of those situations, in, in, in every last one of them, they taught me something. Now, at first I was angry and pissed off. That, that's where I went. I'm just going to be straight up with you. And the emotional process happens. You know, they said that there's five stages of, 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 of grieving. And those grieving processes are very relevant because they have to do with your emotions. Sometimes I can hide my emotions and I want you to recognize if you're hiding your emotions because the grieving process is very important. And though my world has been shifted, my mind has been spun around, my heart's been spun around, guess what? I still know where I'm going. <laughs> it's not about revenge, it's not about hate, it's not about dislike. I guess the bottom line is forgiveness. Forgive me and forgive those in my world. And that's it. My sister said something to me when she called me one day and she called me on a low day. And she said, Sanford, just do what you always do. Love. Love you. Laugh like you laugh. Love people. Lift them up like you do. Wow. The next thing I want to talk about, of course, is relationships. We're meant to meet many different people in our lives. We are social creatures. And some people are just going to piss us off. Some people, we're just going to yearn over for long periods of time. Some people, we don't even, you know, we meet them, that's it. What's the expression? Season, reason, lifetime. But again, my sister said something to me that, I, that just blew me out the water. And this is my younger sister. <laughs> you know, proving that it doesn't matter what age. Sometimes everybody drops a jewel, man, that just lifts you up, that just makes you stop. Friendships, intimate relationships, and family relationships. There's all other kind of acquaintances and things like that. But those main three, the bottom line, the bottom question you need to ask yourself and I need to ask myself and anyone who comes into my world needs to ask, do you want to be with me and do I want to be with you? Bam! <laughs> Simple. Simple. Not what can you buy me? You don't fit my description. You don't, you're not on my list. You, you piss me off. You upset my dog. You made, you burned down my house. You're not the man or the woman I thought you were. If you don't want to be there, don't be there. Just say that. I don't want to be there. If you want to be there, say, I want to be there. I want to not be under contract with you. In other words, when the contract in, when the job in, when it's not going honky-dory, I'm out. But I want to be with you covenant. I want to be in a covenant relationship with you where if you go down, I go down. Where if we fight, we fight together. Well, if we're in a, in, in, in a tornado, we, we, we're going around together. Simple. It's not tall. We got a lot of rules. You know what they say. The more rules you have, the more rule breakers you make. I say break the rules. 
The next thing I want to talk about is purpose. You heard me talk about that before, I'm sure. We all have a heroic mission, something that we're meant to do specifically on this planet. Yours is calling you from the inside out. It's calling you all the time. Mine, you heard me say it, and I feel it every time I say it. My purpose is to inspire people. But that inspiration has to come from me first. It has to come out of me first. So yes, I have to inspire me first. Anytime you want to really follow your purpose, you have to be it first. I'm not saying perfect at it. I'm not saying you don't waver into the ego, into the false self, into the ugly side, into the dark side. Mm -hmm. That's a Star Wars reference in case you didn't get that. <laughs> but allow yourself to mess up, screw up, F up, whatever you want to call it. And then move on. Be unapologetic about it because you're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. I have messed up. I'll do it many more times, but I'm telling you this much. My intention is always to come from a place of love. Always. If I need to apologize, I will. But I'm not going to apologize for being me. And my purpose is clear on that. Look inside, folks. It's there. Your purpose is there. It's calling you every day. You're going to travel down many roads. It's always going to bring you back to that main thing you were meant to be here for. I coach. I write books. I talk on my videos. I meet strangers on the street. I was at a park the other day. Me and my friend, this guy just came. He just started talking to us about truth and purpose and direction and right and wrong. And It was amazing. And I have so many people like that in my life as well. Purpose is a big, is a big aha. It's your purpose. Keep seeking it. It's there inside you. Stop for a moment every now and then and just listen. When you're feeling angry, upset, stressed, anxious, those are all signs for you to stop. Take a back seat. Meditate. And say, what is the next right step? What is my next right step? Say it. Contemplate it. Let it sit inside. And the answer will come. The last thing I want to talk about is nutrition and fitness. There's a lot of different diets out there. There's a lot of different ways people are eating. I'd say find yourself a nutritionist, someone that eats, eats well, according to you, um, get help in that area, you know, just like you would get emotional help for things going on in your life, your personal life. Find help sometimes. And I'm not saying don't eat junk food, McDonald's, Burger King, Hungry Jack's, whatever you guys call it here. <laughs> and Lord knows, I love my chocolate. I probably have chocolate coursing through my veins right about now. I'm a chocolate fan. I'm a chocolate fiend. But eat more things that, that nature makes. Yes, vegetables, fruits. Um, if you're not a meat eater, you know, fish. If you're not a fish eater, any sort of meat, vegan. There are plenty of vegan people out there. Look on, look on the, uh, look in Google. That's not your thing. And this milk thing, if you like milk, drink it. But I've decided because milk kind of slows me down a bit. It makes me sluggish and leaves a taste on my, on my tongue. So I started drinking almond milk. That's what I drink. And I drink it in my cereal if I'm having cereal. My daughter loves it. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this on here because maybe she said, no, I've changed to almond milk. It's not regular milk anymore. That's all right. But she, she eats that cereal yeah, when she has it, when she has it. So that's what I've changed to. So find ways of eating things that are more natural. Nature is there for us to, to be a part of it, to eat, to eat the fruits that it offers. And then fitness. Move. Keep moving. Stay active. I'm not saying you got to go and run out and go out and run 10 kilometers or 10 miles, you know, do a thousand push-ups. But when you work out, when you move, it allows you to get in contact with those emotions. Um, I've done a lot of coaching and training people, and I was just touching the tip of the iceberg with my fitness, getting them really fit in their body. But I was noticing that a lot of different emotions were coming up. 
And I didn't really know what to do with that. And now, I do. I do now. I don't just train people's bodies, but I train their minds and their emotions now. I had to come to that. I didn't always know that. Don't be afraid to stuff up, folks. It's important. So, back to fitness. Do something that inspires you. Get out in nature. Something. Tennis. Walking. Javelin. Uh, cricket. Croquet. Something. When you're out there, you'll be inspired. You'll be inspired. So, make sure you have these four things in your fitness. Make sure that you have, you always warm up first, okay? First for a warm up. And then you do something cardio wise, okay? Be heart smart. Then do something for your strength. Building strength, light weights, push ups, you know, that sort of thing. Stretch, always stretch, always stretch. Stay supple, loose. And then number four, if there's a skill base you're working at, let's say if you're a professional athlete, semi professional, or you just like things like darts, I mean, you gotta work at it to become really good at it. You know, you have the desire. Now you need the determination, um, the dedication, and of course the discipline to stay with that. Okay. Anytime I finish my fitness sessions, and even in the middle, I'm always doing backhand springs, fronthand springs, salts because I want to stay connected to my skill set. And plus, I do a lot of consulting in those areas as well. So stay active, get out in nature, and get get driven by that. Yeah, nature motivates us. Folks, this is my last talk for 2015. I want to thank you very much for hanging out with me all year. And you make sure you have a marvelous 2016. I want to send out big hugs and big love to my kids and to everyone else for 2016. Happy New Year. And as always, love your mission.